In this tutorial we're going to be looking at the idea of passing parameters to methods. A uh, parameter is an additional piece of information or multiple pieces of information that you will pass to a method so that it can do its job in different ways. So recall that a method is a subprogram. It is a set of instructions that you package together. So in this case I have a method called print line of chars which prints out a number of symbols. In this case I've written it to print out 65 of these at symbols on a single line. So if I want this to to be a little more versatile the way that I can achieve that is through the use of parameters. So right now I have a very simple main method. The only thing this main method does is a single call to print line of chars. And so essentially this main method is written just to test this print line of chars method. This print line of chars might also be referred to as a procedure because it is just a it's an, a command, it's an action that takes place. Once the main method calls print line of chars, it has nothing else to do with it. It basically calls it and then once print line of chars is done doing what it's supposed to do, the main method moves on. Whatever print line of chars does has no impact on the main method going forward. So that makes print line of chars a procedure. But we might want to pass in a parameter, which means to give this method some additional information so that it can modify the way that it does whatever its task happens to be. The simplest modification that I can think of here is to not limit this to 65 characters. Right now, if I want to print out a different number of characters, I would have to change this number. And then I'd probably change my comment to reflect that. So I just changed it from 65 down to 30. And then I'd have to compile and then I'd run my program again. So a little bit more versatile would be to write this subprogram so that it prints out n symbols where this number instead of always being 30 was n but if I'm going to do that then I need to, a definition for n where am I going to get that value of n the nice place to get that value of n might be from here so let's say 65 I want to print out 65 characters so that makes sense from the main method point of view but I'm going to have to continue to make changes up here. I've already changed the content of my of my method, but I also need to now tell it that it should expect to receive something. So when I talk about a parameter, I talk about that as you are feeding additional information into the method. And the way that we feed that in, or at least the way that we tell the method that something is coming in, is we declare it here inside uh, these brackets, inside the brackets, the round brackets for the method. And we have to declare both the data type that's coming in and we have to declare the, the label that we will use to recognize that data. Notice that here when I called print line of chars, I gave it the number 65. Well, that's a number. It doesn't have a name. It doesn't have a label. It's just a value. And so that's something to keep in mind when you are having parameters. Regardless of whether or not this is a, an actual constant that you've typed in as part of your code, or maybe this is a variable, when it comes into the method, all the method receives is the value itself. I'm going to illustrate that in just a moment. So for now, we've got a single call of print line of characters and we give it the value 65. When it calls the method, it receives the value 65. And so in this case, essentially, it understands that to mean that n is equal to 65. And so that means that this loop will run as if there was a 65 there, and it will print out 65 of these characters. If we were to call this method again, so let's say I duplicate that line of code, print line of chars and this time I give it the number 
13. Well, in this first call to the method, I give it the number 65, it will print 65 times because n is now 65. In the second call to the method, I give it the number 13, and on that second call, n is now 13. So this value, it's like a variable, a parameter is very much like a variable. In this case, it's going to, every time that we invoke the method, or every time we call the method, as the parameter changes, then what is received here will be changed, and that will be interpreted differently each time. Now, I don't want you to think that the only way this works is with constant values. You could also have done something like int x. And actually, let me go ahead and give it a value. So I'm going to say int x equals 100. Print line of chars x. So now I've got a variable with an integer value. And it's important that it's an integer. This method is only designed to accept integer values. And so it will accept an integer that is stored in a variable, or it will accept an integer that is written explicitly in the code as a constant. And so if I were to, sorry, reset this and then compile it. And now if we run it, what we should get is a line of 100 characters, followed by a line of 65, followed by a line of 13. There's my 100, there's my 65, and there's my 13. So that is an example of parameter passing um, for a method. Now, there's a couple of other things I can do here, and I think I'm going to use this as an opportunity to introduce the char or remind you of the char data type. This could have worked just as well if I had done single quotes rather than double quotes, rather than doing it as a string. And really, it's up to you. There's, there's no really significant difference there. But since this is always a single character, it's more correct to do this as a char as opposed to a string. But I'm going to modify, I want to modify my print line of chars so that I can specify what this character is. So let's imagine, wouldn't it be nice if I could call for 100 of the at symbols and maybe 65 dollar signs and then 13 ampersands. So now not only am I specifying a different number of symbols each time but I'm actually going to change the symbols. And in doing that I am also going to be feeding or inputting in the parameter list a character and that's I'm going to call the output char or out char. So its data type is character and it's going to be called out char. So instead of printing an ampersand here, I will print out char. And now when I run this, this first invocation or calling of the print line of chars method is going to give it the value x. But what's stored in x? 100 is stored in x. So it's going to give it the value 100 and it's going to give it the character the at symbol. Let's actually, um, I want to go one step further. Just to show you again, it can be stored in a variable. So now I've got y, which is a terrible name for a variable, but it illustrates things for my purposes here. The variable x has the value 100 in it. The variable y has the character at, the at symbol in it. So here I'm feeding it two variables. But when we get to here, n is equal to 100 which is the value that was stored in x. Out char is equal to the at symbol which is the value that was stored in y. Or I can do it explicitly using constant values as I did with the next two. And now I compile that and I run it and I get 100 at symbols, I get 65 dollar signs, and I get 13 ampersands. So this is an example of changing the method definition to accept input values. The idea that parameters, although parameters look very much like variables, you need to keep in mind that what they really are is whatever value is passed in here. And the value is passed in. It's a copy. 
So if I were to change n or change out char in here, it doesn't have any effect on x and y. Just in the same way that it's impossible for me to have an effect on the number 65. It's a constant value. So changes that occur here to these parameters have no bearing whatsoever on the calling uh, main, in this case it's from the main method. And the last thing, increasing method utility. Instead of print line of chars always being a fixed number of characters, now I've increased that utility so I can specify the number of characters and which characters are output. So there is our tutorial on how you can pass parameters to methods to increase their utility, get them doing more than one thing or doing variations on the same thing.